Hi everyone, my name is Francesca Ferrando. I'm a professor of philosophy here at New York University for the program of liberal studies. And I am extremely excited to be the keynote speaker for this wonderful event. I would like to deeply thank Professor Joseph Relan Virey for the invitation, all the faculty members and the students of the Polytech of Manila in the Philippines. I really hope to come and visit you very, very soon. So my talk today is going to be about the posthuman turn, politics and global justice. In order to address this uh, uh, fascinating topic, we are, going to, um, we are going to divide the talk in three parts. In the first part, I'm going to address the topic of our posthuman era, why our era could be considered posthuman. Then I'm going to define what I mean by the term posthuman, since the posthuman is an umbrella term for different movements, such as transhumanism, posthumanism, anti-humanism, new materialism, and more. Here we're going to focus specifically on transhumanism and posthumanism. These two movements are related but are also very, very different. This is why, after addressing the topic of uh, the posthuman era, we're going to talk about transhumanism. What is transhumanism? And what is, more specifically, uh, transhumanist politics? In the second part of my talk, I'm going to address the topic of posthumanism, which again is another movement which goes under the umbrella term of the posthuman, but should be not confused with transhumanism. So in the second part, we're going to address the topic of posthumanism, which I'm going to define as a post slash humanism, as a post slash anthropocentrism, and a post slash dualism. This second part about uh, this third part about post slash dualism is going to be addressed in the third part of my talk, where we're also going to talk about technology, more specifically post-humanist politics, and in uh, an embracing an all-encompassing way the topic of global justice. After this, we're going to open the conversation for the Q and A. So let's start our um, our discourse today on the topic of uh, the posthuman and politics, in which my main argument is going to be that politics in the 21st century must take into account a post-humanist and post-anthropocentric approach to address the topic of justice in a comprehensive and fulfilling way. I'm going to um, address this uh, topic by first embracing again our era our post-human era. So what do we mean by, the, uh, by uh, um, claiming that uh, planet Earth on the 21st century could be defined as post-human? First of all, the 21st century has ushered in a redefinition of the body by cybernetic and biotechnological developments. The concept of human has been broadly challenged. Implanted technology may be necessary for biological survival. Think, for instance, of the case of uh, pacemakers. This, uh, this case sh clearly show the case of humans who need technology in order to survive. So here we have a very clear, clear example and a practical example of the notion of the cyborg. Hmm? The, the comprehensive uh, embeddedness of cyb, cybernetic, plus ORG organism cyborg. Another example here is that physicality no longer represents the primary space for social, economic or political interaction. The proliferation of our online personas and avatars is sustained psychologically by a growing issue of internet addiction and materially by an alarming race in space pollution. So here we really are going to see how much the human of the 21st century is uh, depending on te technology to define their own identity. Uh, think, for instance, again, of your online personas, think of your Facebook page, think of your second, um, second life avatar if you use it, think of your Gmail, think of all the extension of yourself in the technological realm and how they define you as as who you are, your own identity. In the 21st century, the impact of anthropocentric habits on Earth is becoming so massive 
the geologists are addressing the present era at the Anthropocene, in which human actions are seriously affecting the ecosystem. And in this, um, with this topic, we are entering also the realm of anthropocentrism, in the sense that in the 21st century, we do not, we cannot see anymore the human as a someone, as a species that doesn't have an affect on the whole ecosphere. We now, we now know that our habits are actually having a direct impact on all the other species and on planet as a whole. Um, and from here again, we can add a lot of examples. For instance, we can also talk about GMOs, genetically modified organisms that have entered our chain of economy from food to textile, for instance, BP cotton, to genetically modified pets, such as the glowfish that we are seeing here in the slides. So we're talking about technology entering the 21st century, hybridizing with the human, not only the human, but also other human, other non-human species and, and the planet as a whole. So we can now talk about the posthuman turn. We have uh, already mentioned the fact that posthuman uh, include the different school of thoughts. Specifically here, we are going to address posthumanism and transhumanism, but it's important to mention the fact that there are other school of thoughts such as anti-humanism, meta-humanism, and new materialism. So what uh, does the posthuman term embrace? What does it mean? What all these school of thought actually share and uh, um, is, a, is a philosophical movement? As we've mentioned, uh, one of the main assets of reformulation here is the human. So following the scientific and biotechnological developments over the 21st century, the notion of the human has been challenged. Mm? Are we human? Are we cyborgs? Are we posthuman? The notion of the posthuman has developed to cope with the urgency for an integral redefinition of the notion of the human. And the philosophical landscape, which has since forms, includes different schools of thoughts, because there are different answers that we can give to this specific question. And we're going to see different answers given by posthumanism, specifically, and transhumanism. Let's then now focus specifically on transhumanism. Uh, just uh, clarifying here that later on we are going to actually uh, address posthumanism and what does posthumanism uh, offer to this discussion. But let's start with transhumanism. Before we um, talk about transhumanism, it's also very important that we should also use a plural when we talk about transhumanism. There are many different schools of thoughts in transhumanism. We can think of libertarian transhumanism, democratic transhumanism, these two we're going to address today, extropianism, the singularity, etc., etc. But all of these uh, schools of thoughts um, relate to one specific goal. The main goal of transhumanism is human enhancement. That's why uh, the movement that actually today relates specifically with transhumanism is called Humanity Plus. We see the H plus in the slides, H for humanity plus for enhancement. And according to transhumanism, how can we achieve human enhancement? According to transhumanism, the way to achieve human enhancement in the 21st century and on is in two, uh, through two different axes, axes, which are science and technology. I would go so far as saying that there is no transhumanism without a scientific and technological revisitation of the human. Mm? So we can achieve, according to transhumanism, human enhancement through uh, employing and developing different kinds of sciences and technology. We are also here talking about uh, um, emerging and speculative frames. Mm? Think of fields such as regenerative medicine, nanotechnology, radical life extension, mind unploding, and cryonics, for instance. On uh, the other side of the slide, we see an artistic revisitation of the transhuman approach through the uh, interesting work of artist Natasha Vitamore. So here we see, for instance, Primo Posthuman as a human of the close future that has been redesigned with a metabrain, mm, with a skin that has been redefined with an external layer, an internal layer. Um, and again, we, we can see here through her work how much the posthuman intended through a transhumanist approach 
is embedded with a redefinition of the human through science and technology. Um, Transhumanists also offer some interesting perspectives when we think of uh, politics. So when we think of politics, we have different uh, um, school of thoughts. Again, in transhumanism, we can think of libertarian transhumanism. I have uh, here in the slides the um, Zoltan Isvan. He is uh, uh, he was a U.S. presidential candidate in 2016, and he's actually uh, run. Um, he announced recently that he intend to run for governor or of California in the 2018 election. Soltvan is a um, libertarian transhumanist, and according to uh, this uh, group of uh, thinkers, uh, free market is the best guarantor for the right of human enhancement. Another movement uh, uh, which is specifically related to politics within the transhumanist agenda is uh, the democratic transhumanism. And according to democratic transhumanism, it's really important to call for an equal access to technological enhancements, mm? otherwise limited to certain socio-political classes and related to economic power, encoding racial and sexual politics. What we are talking here is that according to democratic transhumanism, yes, uh, we should embrace human enhancement. The problem is who would have access to these kind of technologies? Would these kind of technologies be very expensive? Only people with money would have access to this technology. Only some nations would have access to these technologies. So this is what democratic transhumanism brings to the discussion. Yes, to human enhancement, but with an equal access to this kind of, of technologies. So uh, it's very important here to clarify that for transhumanism, the main goal of human is human enhancement. Of course, this can be uh, criticized from a posthumanist perspective, which I'm going to enter now in the second uh, presentation, because it's still very much an anthropocentric agenda. So it's very much based on the interest of one species, which is the human species. We're going uh, in the second part of my talk to address posthumanism and what is posthumanism offering to the political arena. Thank you so much for your attention.